Hi everybody, it is May 26, 2019. I want to pass along some information to you regarding the Oroville Dam and I want to thank my subscribers for uh, passing along some of this information that I now pass along to you. Oroville Dam is, well, let me refresh the page because they should have the last hour. Let's see. No, they don't. Okay. Um, it is very close to 893 feet. And part of this video is very damning, very damning evidence against Juan Brown. And I really want to thank uh, my subscriber for sending along that information. Um, well, let's get into it. Susan, um, not Susan, Millie Kay has posted a video about river releases, very educational. So if you want to understand all of these numbers, um, she does a pretty good job of explaining it. And I will link below to everything. Okay, information from Paul Preston. Susan Walding just posted a video today. And please click on the links below and circulate the information. Thanks. Now, unfortunately, I don't know, is this picture a current picture or is it based on this report, 2000? the year 2000, a report on the dam. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little confused about that. So this is the report, March 23rd, 2000, showing cracks and problems with the dam. And I believe her current pictures are showing that we still have a lot of problems. Well, yeah, you guys have a lot of problems with your Department of Water Resources because the reason why they're not opening the gates is because they can't. They can't. And I'm going to show you some evidence. Oh, circumstantial, but it's evidence nonetheless that there is a reason why they're not opening those gates to release water right now and know what Department of Water Resources is telling you that uh, allowing the lake to be this full is in compliance with the Army Corps of Engineers. Sorry, I've posted a video where a Department of Water Resources spokeswoman was saying at, that the cutoff was 855 feet. They release it because they want to keep 50 feet free and clear to capture a oh, rain and snow melt. All right.
So please circulate Susan's video here. Paul Preston has a new article, uh, Breaking Inspectors on Oroville Dam, May 24, 2019. For the second time in a little over one month, inspectors could be seen making inspections of the headworks on the bottom of the crippled spillway. The last inspection, April 19, 2019, following complaints to the Butte County Sheriff that the spillway had signs of major seam leaks and buckled plates at the radius. The spillway was opened April 2nd, then suddenly shut down April 11, 2019. So, here, inspectors looking at possible leaking seams and buckled plates, April 19, 2019, right here. And inspectors can be seen at the bottom of the main spillway, May 24, 2019. Two uh, inspectors appear on the top of the headworks above the spill gates. Okay. What I find very interesting is this. There was an article April 11, that was the publication date, New Cali News. They write, the Oroville Dam spillway system was suddenly and unexpectedly shut down after 12 p.m. Thursday, April 11. As of this writing, there is equipment on the main spillway. At this time, there is no explanation as to why the complete shutdown of the Hyatt power plant and the main spillway occurred or the nature as to why there appears to be equipment on the spillway deck making repairs. According to the Oroville Mercury Register, that's, that is the paper that wrote the editorial about how all of you with your concerns about the Oroville Dam, well, you're just getting that shoddy information from social media and, um, you know, quit being hysterical. Well, the Oroville Mercury Register wrote on April 10, <clears throat> the State Department of Water Resources stopped releases from the Oroville Dam spillway on Wednesday because of forecasts showing upcoming dry weather. Wow. That's why they, uh, Hyatt Power Plant and the main spillway stopped releasing water suddenly? Well, think about how the lake is continuing to rise and think about those forecasts that you had at the beginning of last week, the rain, <clears throat> oh my God, and the snow. Okay, why then did they not release water when they were no longer getting these dry weather forecasts? They're not releasing water because the dam is not ready for a release. That is my take. Even just reading that, we shut it down because we're, you know, the lake level was fine and there's dry weather. Well, you didn't have that. And you've not been having that. So, in fact, did I say I wanted to thank all of my subscribers who contributed to the information in this video? All right. Um, this I got from a subscriber, Chico, California, and it is today at 6.31, and let me refresh the page. Yeah, 7.13, okay. Um, so, let's take a look. Rain today, four and a half inches. Rain yesterday, 1.35 inches, um, storm rain, 4 
15.75 inches, nearly 5 inches. This month, 15.37 inches. What? Have you really gotten that much rain um, for the month of May? Okay. Well, you've had a lot of rain then. So why aren't they opening the gates? You know, sometimes when I do these videos, I have these images that come to mind. And suddenly I just saw all of you in this area storming the Department of Water Resources and demanding answers for what is going on. Because none of the information is uh, information that, well, when you read that the Oroville Mercury Register actually said they shut it down because you were having dry weather, you're not having dry weather now. And think about that snow that is going to be coming down. Oh, and then think about all of the uh, reservoirs above Oroville, above the lake. They're at full capacity. Seismic activity. I really suggest that you guys bookmark this page and check out the seismic activity um, because there's been quite a lot of it. Some are speculating that it has to do with the earthquake that just happened. Peru, it was was it an 8 or over 8? Okay, well, you've had a lot of seismic activity. Oroville Dam. Past 24 hours. May 25 started and your seismic activity on this page goes up to about 10 and then here May 26, and it goes on up to the 17th hour or so. Um, that is very concerning, considering it's an earthen dam and considering all of the problems with the dam. Now, I have seen an awful lot of extremely low frequencies emitted in Northern California. Um, recently, I have seen extremely low frequencies like I have not seen it. Hang on. All right, this I captured on the 25th at 4.38 a.m. And you can see the extremely low frequencies that are being emitted right in this area. I have posted videos where I showed very powerful, extremely low frequencies being set off uh, right at that Oregon border, right up here. Um, and all of this has been recent. But all of these extremely low frequencies, what can happen with extremely low frequencies? Well, let's see, high power, extremely low frequency radiation generated by modulated high frequency heating of the ionosphere can cause earthquakes. And, um, yeah, how about that earthquake weapon? This is a technology abstract from a military document. The earthquake weapon uh, description, ultrasonic extremely low frequencies or acoustic weapon to destroy runways, buildings, bridges. Weapon will generate a very strong acoustic wave that causes structures to resi resi resonate and thereby destroy them. Think about that rain that is destroying so many roads. Think about all of that dam, uh, the, the spill gates of dams that are just, oh, sorry, that one went. Um, extremely low frequencies are incredibly powerful and they can be emitted through the ground or into the atmosphere, and or. So, <laughs> advantages, destructive to structures, and war-making potential. But does 
not directly threaten people? I'd say it sure does directly threaten people. So, yeah, here we go. Glenn Towers, see all those wires going down to the ground? They emit the frequencies through the ground. They can cause earthquakes. So, the seismic activity that is going on, well, I'm sorry, we can't definitively answer that question. Not when, and you're going to have to take my word for it because this video will be too long. I capture a lot of video of the extremely low frequencies going off right smack around that Oroville Dam. So, yeah, now you have a, a UC Davis professor giving you another reason. Tectonic time bomb, recent burst of seismic activity, has scientists taking notice. Why are you having so many of these earthquakes in California? Um, well, let's listen to just a few minutes. Has scientists concerned tonight? Could something bigger be on the way? CBS 13's Greg Ligon spoke to a professor at UC Davis to get some answers about what these small quakes really mean. Greg. Yeah, Adrian, over the last few weeks, these small tremors have been reported along the west coast of Northern California up to Washington State. Scientists tell us it's due to a phenomenon called slow slip, and it's happening north of us out in the Pacific. The uh, Juan de Fuca plate is what it's called, nicknamed, uh, is sliding under North America. And sometimes it's locked and sometimes it slips, but when it slips, it's building up stress elsewhere on the fault. When that kind of stress builds up and is released, it can lead to so-called megaquakes, like the one that rocked Japan and caused a massive tsunami in 2011. UC Davis professor Jim McLean says slow slip is somewhat new and not completely understood, but could be a precursor to larger seismic activity. And these things occur where you have a locked plate at relatively shallow depths where one plate is sliding under another and then you get release and it's, it's shallow enough that it actually shifts the seafloor. Megaquakes of magnitude 9 or more are rare. It's the smaller ones on land that tend to concern most people. Professor McLean says at some point it's likely there will be significant seismic activity along the Bay Area's Hayward Fault. And that has the potential of shaking us pretty well here in the Central Valley, much more than the Loma Prieta earthquake. This building on the UC Davis campus is currently being upgraded to better withstand the next big quake that affects the Central Valley. Even though earthquakes are a fact of life in California, some say they are ill-prepared for the next big one. I know we, that there's always the potential of being an earthquake, but um, we just haven't thought much about it. And experts say the best thing you can do to prepare is to have an emergency plan and kit, which includes lots of water and non-perishable food. All right, Greg, thank you. Unfortunately, I do believe that you need to pe prepare. Everybody needs to have uh, some uh, preparation for anything that may, that may occur. Look at the flooding that has taken place. Um, and, you know, this... Yeah, you know, when he's talking about the shallow earthquakes, that's a signature that it is man-induced from frequencies. And we have seen the radar, and I have shown many videos of just, and I have said many times, posting there a lot of videos saying what is going on, California, stating very clearly they're setting off these extremely low frequencies right around the Oroville Dam, how, how could they be setting off all of these extremely low frequencies when they can cause earthquakes in California? Okay, well, you know, we have really just utterly, violently insane people. Now, Orville, <laughs> March 10, 2017. You know this guy? Uh, 
Oh, he doesn't show his picture. Okay. Juan Brown. Juan Brown. Three videos right here. This guy. Three videos from 2017 with he admitting that no, he doesn't say 855, the lake level. He says 865 is the cutoff. And they begin to release the water. Now, I can't play any of the video, but I will tell you in these videos exactly where he begins to admit that he has been lying recently when he claims that, well, we're all crazy. It's in compliance with the Army Corps of Engineers. It can go up to you know, the levels and up to like 900 before a release. He's lying. Three videos, and I really want to thank my subscriber for sending these along. You know, this guy has been hitting people with copyright strikes. Um, so in 2017, in this video, Oroville, 10 March, what's under the Oroville Dam? All right. Um, oh, wow, I didn't even listen to this video. Shoot. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, at a minute and a half, he begins to talk about the uh, lake levels, and he points out that in March of 2017, he points out that the lake levels are at 860, and he says the cutoff is at 865, meaning they release water at 865. In this video, uh, what is this, 15 March flyover date, he talks about the water level, um, and he states that the lake level, March 15, is hovering, hovering at 862 feet, and he says it has two to three feet or two to three feet shy of that 865 arbitrary knockoff number. And then he says that 865 number necessitates the need to open the main spillway. In this video, and oh, the time period for this, five minutes and one second, where he admits that no, this lake level at now, um, well, let's see if we have the new figure. Um, well, it's uh, very soon going to be 893 feet, and he is admitting that the friggin' cutoff, the start of release of water at 865, this guy, my God. What is it with people? This was such a great find by this uh, subscriber. How dare he come out now, 2019, and say, you know, that people are crazy for being concerned with the lake level being, well, near 893. God, this guy lives up there. He should be shamed into just never feeling like he can show his public face. Never feeling like he can show his face in the public. That's it. Oh, God, I can't stand people. Uh, it, wow, man. People are really screwed up. Very screwed up. This guy, oof. And you know what? These videos... 140,000. People have left me comments saying, oh, go to Juan Brown's channel. He's giving you, you know, all of the information that you need to know. No! No! He's yet another lying sack of shit. Sorry. Okay, um, so in this video, March 29, 2017, 
here he is talking about the Hyatt power plant alone cannot spill enough water to keep up with the inflows. He talks about the heavy snowpack in 2017. Um, and that heavy snowpack, well, that would lead to a gradual release of waters. And he, in this video, says, currently the lake level is 838 and states that it went up two feet since they shut off the release. So they have 10 days to make the repairs. 10 days to make the repairs. And then he says that for this spring, there will need to be one or two releases to get us through the spring. Because and he actually sounds you know, a bit concerned about that snow pack. What about now, Juan Brown? It's at 893 feet. All right, you also had very bizarre clouds. Golf ball size hail over there. My car got damaged, the hood of it got danged up. Definitely weird. This is uh, climate change? What do you guys think? I want to know, I want to see what you guys think this is. This is definitely. Okay, so what meteorologists are calling this is a supercell. This was over uh, Redding, California, and Redding had quite a lot of hail, and he talks about the hail damaging his car. Golf ball size hail. Okay. Um, to understand, and I'm not saying that I'm right, but one possibility is artificial cloud making. And I posted a video on the artificial clouds, artificial cloud proof and watch yesterday's storm creation, power outages, strange cat behavior, all of the frequencies that they use in, uh, in creating the clouds, creating um, artificial clouds. But I'm going to bring you to the smoke clouds. Smoke clouds. Where is it? Oh, dang. Hang, hang on. All right, so abnormal polarity of thunderclouds grown from neg negatively charged air and weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy. And in this document, they talk about how, wow, that the black carbon dust, the artificial heat source with black carbon dust, they can raise the temperature of the atmosphere. It's not the only method, but it is one method. And what does it do, this black carbon dust, what does it do to cumulus clouds? It grows them. It grows. They grow really big. And they have been making clouds for a very long time. Um, artificial artificial cluster in the Earth's stratosphere? Sorry. Uh, yeah, my eyesight. Oh, I need glasses. Uh, the aerosol they experimented with to make artificial clouds, one of those aerosols is lithium and the other aluminum. Oh, and barium. So, uh, smoke clouds. These are pictures of uh, the smoke clouds, experiments of smoke clouds. So, have you seen any of these in your area? That they just begin to look kind of like cauliflower, and then they develop this 
kind of black or dark gray, you can watch them. And you can watch the black, dark gray just grow on the outside of the cloud. That is an artificial cloud. So what are we seeing here? The gray, OK? I've seen these clouds in Anderson, South Carolina. They're, they just call them supercells now. Never saw these clouds when I was younger. See them, well, they grow them. No kidding. So, guys, links are all below. Please circulate the information. Uh, very important information from Paul Preston. Uh, why aren't they releasing the water? Now that you not you don't have the dry weather. And yeah, I see all of you storming the Department of Water Resources demanding answers again in my mind's eye. Stay safe, everyone.